my frames came in. That didn't go exactly according to plan. The Acorn did not put a stabilizer board on the pallet. So the base of this stack was able to slide around on the pallet. I was trying to get it off the lift gate straight onto the trailer and it just wasn't gonna work out. So we just had to tip the load over and then I had him set the other pallet on the ground and I went and got it with the tractor, which I didn't wanna do. I wanted to get them both on this so I could get them undercover quicker and easier. Just park them, park the trailer under roof. But it looks like the rain's holding off. It was supposed to be thundering and having major storms right now, but it keeps getting pushed back. So I guess it'll work out. But I uh, got two pallets. I think it's 16 boxes per pallet. And let's see, four, eight, 12, six, yeah, six, 16 boxes per pallet and 72 frames per box. So this should put me through the end of the season. May 23rd, and it looks like sourwood is setting bloom. That's a little early. That looks like it's, I don't know, week, week, or week or week and a half away from blooming. We're at a low enough elevation, we usually don't make a lot from it, but anything's possible. It's almost sunrise. My cell builder, which I've used to make four rounds of queens there, is queenless. It did not take a they did not take a queen on that last round I dropped a cell in. So this is the newt that uh or this is a swarm that I caught, the first swarm I caught this year. Kind of forgot about them. They were in some bushes and they are exploding. I'm gonna have to check them for swarm cells. But um, I'm gonna merge them in with my cell builder this morning. That's why I'm out here so early. It's getting to that time of year where I'm gonna have to move bees at night. I, I'm a morning person, not a night person, but goodness, at 4.50 this morning, the sky was getting gray, so it doesn't give you a lot of time to get bees loaded in the dark and, and all that good stuff. I might have to stay up late. So this is my cell builder, bottom two boxes and the top two. And this is the nuke I'm merging in. This is what happens when you let a nuke go past five weeks. And I don't remember exactly when I made them. Um, they've been there since the 1st of April, I bet. And this is the end of May, so <laughs> they've probably had eight weeks. They would be swarming soon if I didn't get them, either get a box on them or something. In fact, I probably do need to smoke them up and make sure they don't have any cells. I can smoke them up, they're packed in there. still okay that's good so I just soaked them down with sugar syrup soaked the bottom down with sugar syrup as well I'm gonna put a clink scooter on them and put their honey supers back on I didn't feed them I just soaked them with syrup so I'm not concerned about them storing that the reason I do that is I think it, it does help merging them I'm not doing a newspaper combine or anything so by the time they get done licking each other off, they're pretty happy. Bees don't like being messed with this time of day.
ったI got up to move this morning, move bees this morning, and it was gray by 4.50 a.m. So that doesn't give me enough time to work when the bees aren't flying. So I've got to stay up late. I'd like to get a couple of loads tonight. I want to clean this yard out completely so I don't have to come back in here. And um, I'd, like to, I'd like to get another load moved, but we'll see how I hold up. Pretty tired. I got up extra early this morning, and I'm staying up late tonight so we'll see how it goes but i'm just dodging rain it's been raining so much i've got to get them moved and get boxes on them i don't want to get boxes on them here in the mating yard because this makes them harder to move later i'd rather get them in their permanent spots and then get boxes on them but boy it's just been raining and i've been busy so I wear a bee jacket most of the time. I do wear just a veil and a shirt sometimes. Uh, my bee jacket is an ultra breeze and it's ventilated. But when I'm moving bees like this, I prefer wearing a veil with a hat and long sleeve shirt because I can put permethrin all over myself, all the way down my arms. If I do that on a bee jacket, the permethrin gets on my skin and that's no good. I also wear gloves with bug spray on them. And I have learned to pull my sleeves up and either use something with DEET or Picaridin in it because the ticks will crawl up my arms underneath my shirt. Uh, when you're in weeds like this, in this kind of country, this time of year in Tennessee, ticks are everywhere. It's insane. You also have to watch out for copperheads underneath the, the hives. They like to you know, getting places where the king snakes and stuff can't get to them, so. Gloves, black widows too. You do find a black widow every now and then. So gloves are a good idea, groping around in the dark underneath the hive that you can't see. So I'm trying to make up my second load of the night here. I need three more. And I'm getting into colonies that I have not queen checked yet. I'd say that one's okay. Let's see, these were dropped on 415, so they have just hit five weeks. I don't want to pull a dud in if I don't have to. I bet that one's okay. Got bees hanging out the front. That one looks a little weaker, that one looks okay. Queen checking colonies in the dark without looking at them. Are looking at them yeah that one's okay for sure yeah, that one's probably okay maybe maybe not I think I'm gonna finish this load out go fill up a yard and I've loaded two duds already so I need to get two extras. And I'll combine those duds. So let's see, I need four more. That'll work. I think I'll call it a night after that. I have to get a shower. I'm drenched. I've got an empty trailer and a full bee yard. So that's good. Whew. Glad to have this done. I got two loads tonight, so I've got one more big group that I need to move. And then it'll just be jostling hives from one yard to another off of double screens and swarms that I've caught and silly stuff like that. 
So one more night, but I would like to clean check them all before I get to moving them. What I did with the duds, some of these are really heavy and have bees boiling out the front. Some of them are really light. So the two duds that I pulled, I just set them on top of heavy highs with a lot of bees. I'll combine those tomorrow. And I'm concerned about some of them being light, so I'll be back in here to feed tomorrow as well, as long as the rain lets me. I'm back this morning feeding this yard because some of these hives are pretty light and I'm a little concerned and I've got a window where it's not raining that I can get some feed in them. Another dud to combine there. I've got some that are pretty big, some that are relatively small. This one I'd say is a medium small. So I'm dropping some pine needles into the open well on these feeders. And I think that'll help with my drowning issue and prevent hive beetle larvae from developing in there because they get in there with the dead bees and they got a protein and a carbohydrate source. So I think that will help with my beetle issues. I haven't treated this yard with grub X yet, but I'll do that before I leave. I've got the spreader and the grub X with me. I think this will be a good yard. There's a ton of milkweed in here, so when the sun's shining, it's just nothing but butterflies. I, I hated to weed eat all that milkweed, but gotta put bees in here. Beautiful spot. I was very careful about the shade line from these trees and also the trees behind me. I think I've got this one line where it'll be mostly sunny all day. here in my southernmost yard. I gave this little nook a gallon of syrup of about 10 days ago. Put some pine needles in the open well here because I've had problems with drowning bees in there and that causes high beetle issues. We've got no drowned bees in here now. So I think that is worth doing. So in this yard, I've got a bunch of feeders that are still in the bottom box. Uh, I probably should have changed that put them in the tops when i was here the last time but it was rainy and the bees were really not happy today it's sunny uh, they probably got a little bit of a flow so they're nice and happy i'm going ahead and moving these simple process first thing i do take the top box off slide all the frames over to the right to make room pull two out i've got those two right there they're not going to be drawn i'll pull the feeder out put it over here Pull two frames out of the center of the top box, which will be completely drawn. Put those on the side of the bottom box. And then I'll take the outer two frames in the bottom box and move them into the center here. Cause these probably won't be completely drawn. The outer one usually is not. Sometimes the second one is, but this one doesn't look like it is. So I'll take both those, move them to the center, feed them. And when I come back the next time that bottom box is completely done, they will not tolerate having undrawn foundations in the middle of the brood nest there. So once the feeder moves up to the top box, I don't have to worry about undrawn frames in the bottom. That's the whole point of this. If the feeder's in the bottom box, 
I know that I don't have a complete box down here. If it's in the second box, I know the bottom is completely drawn. Smooth Sumac's almost in bloom. Those will be opening in the next few days, I bet. So I've already been to three yards this morning. I haven't done a lot of work. Just fed a nuke yard and then I visited two yards that have scale hives in them and downloaded and I uh, just checked on things a little bit. And of the two scale hives I've looked at so far in the last seven days, they've both lost a few pounds. So it's not a lot, it's like two or three pounds, something like that. But that tells me that we just don't have a flow right now. They're they're not able to maintain what they're eating. So um, hopefully when Smooth Sumac comes in, they will start to make a little bit. But I, at this point in the season, I think it's gonna be an off year. I think we got killed by rain and I don't, I don't have the ability to go harvest all of the supers that I've got full already and put drawn comb back on my hives before the sumac flow hits. If I could do that, if I had empty drawn comb to put on the hives, I would make more honey. But I doubt that this sumac flow is going to be strong enough that the bees will really draw out foundations. That's just my guess. I, I'm not a pessimistic person, but I am realistic. And I think that's probably how it's gonna work out that whatever I've got right now is what I'm gonna end up with because I'm not able to turn my comb over. Now I'm working on that. You know, next year I should be able to start harvesting honey in May instead of June and not be working on my infrastructure at a time of year when I should be working on honey harvesting but I'm where I'm at. So I've decided that I'm just gonna feed my nukes a whole lot of sugar syrup during this sumac flow and not even attempt to make honey off of them. Uh, I need drawn comb. That's probably my biggest priority. You know, I'm, I'm building a producer packer operation so I'm producing honey, but I'm also packing honey from other beekeepers. So I can buy honey and pack it and resell it. And um, I think instead of trying to scrounge for honey, I'm just gonna fight for comb. The bees will draw comb if they've got enough carbohydrates in April, May, and June. After June, it gets quite a bit harder to convince them to draw comb. So that's why I'm thinking I better strike while the iron's hot and get everything drawn out that I can while I can because that window is going to close quickly. It's May 29th right now. I've got a month, I've got one month. And after that, it's gonna to be tough to get anybody but the small nukes to draw any comb at all. packing up to leave this yard. I just squealed like a little girl again. I don't know where the end of this thing is. I think it's a baby king snake. Yeah, little bitty guy. So I thought last year that I was seeing way fewer snakes than normal. I don't know why, you know, it seems like things go in cycles. Rabbits certainly do. Wasps and ants and everything does, it seems. Even swarming for bees goes in cycles. Well, this year, the snakes are making up for it. I've seen more than I've seen in years. Uh, about three nights ago, my dogs were barking just 
furiously in the carport. I knew they had something that was not supposed to be there. So I go out and my old dog is up underneath my truck barking like there's something in there. So I get a flashlight and look in the gap between my uh, cab and bed. And on top of the gas tank, there's a black snake. <laughs> I just packed up and went, went inside. <laughs> I think he left. <laughs> and uh, I've made sure to keep my windows and doors shut. So hopefully he's not still in there.